So um, what, what put you into powerlifting? So it really started off with weight loss and then I saw Eddie Hall, um, he pulled 460 kilograms versus Benny Magnuson at the World Deadlift Championships, I believe in 2015. Um, and that was a moment where I was like, I've lost a bunch of weight, I needed something, a new purpose. And I found the deadlift, I started that and it just came naturally to me. Um, it was just one of those things where some people had to work harder at, for me it was just one of those things I guess I was born with good leverages. Um, my first ever deadlift was 140 kilos, um, which at the time I didn't know was good, but for now as a first time deadlifter, I know it's impressive. Um, so that's where I just kept to it. So like, before you, think, before you ever got into powerlifting or weightlifting or gym or anything, yeah. like what was your life like? Like describe a day in the life of pre-gym Michael. Pre-gym Michael, okay. And then okay. compare it to gym Michael. Like okay. tell me the difference in like your day to day now. Day to day now, wow. Uh, I'm going back a long time. Um, we're going back to like, I think about 2016, 2017, Michael. Um, when I was at my heaviest, I would pretty much be, I wouldn't go to school. I would stay at home, play games all day, World of Warcraft, eat shit, whether it be sodas, M&Ms, just nothing healthy at all. Just carbs, sugars, fats, the lot. Um, was bullied whole school life um, until about, year 11, year 12, um, I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna lose some weight. Lost 70 kilos um, just by working, start off with just cardio at home, doing walks, and then I started getting the gym, started training. Um, but now compared to now, it's a whole different lifestyle of training four to five times a week, a lot of weight training, a lot of cardio, um, competing now, um, we just faced an injury, so we're coming back, but compete anywhere from three times a year to four times a year if we're lucky. Yeah. Okay, good. So like, now that you're competing yeah. and getting ready for all these things, what's the most important thing? In, like, is <laughs> it diet? Is it exercise? Is it mindset? Like, mm. describe like your mindset competing and what's important. That's a tough question to be fair. I think every part of what you just said has a place. Um, before this prep we're doing at the moment, my diet was kind of, it was all right. It was just your basic red meat, veg, rice, um, with extra carbs and sugars on top to fill out the diet throughout the day, um, which I never really took, like I took it seriously, but just not 110% or 120%. Um, I'm more focused on the training and mentality, but I've come to realize that the diet is just as important as the training and the mentality because it fuels everything. You feel better, you feel more energized, and that also puts your performance at a higher level. Training, you have to be consistent. You can't just come in, do train two days a week, then train four days, then train one day. You have to be dedicated and disciplined throughout the lot. Otherwise, on comp day, you're gonna get shit on and there's no one to blame but yourself because you're not consistent. Um, then mentally, it's, I feel like the mentality for powerlifting is very different. Um, you see sports where it's like teamwork, it's about getting together to working as a team. Powerlifting's a very solo sport. Um, it's nobody else to point the finger at, it is just you. And I think that's what makes it different. Um, you have to get to that place in your mind where you're, you're kind of fucked up, where whether it be if you're a mum lifting a car for your kids or if your previous past traumas that just set off that adrenaline um, to get you going. For everybody, it's different. Um, for me, it's different to compared to a mate of mine who trains, it'll be completely different for him. You just have to get to that, that zone or what some people would call the void or the, just that mentality switch where you just flip it and you just go. Um, but that mentality has to stay on all the time. You can't just be going into the gym or, you know, don't feel too good, so I'm just gonna do accessories. No, it's you get in, you bust your ass, and you just suck it up. Even if you feel like shit, you still put the work in. Obviously, you manage that, but you just you just gotta do it. There's, it's just grit. You have to have the grit for this sport. If you don't have grit and you don't have the will to win, don't do it. Aside from, you know, your inspiration of Eddie Ball and like getting into the gym, like what was the initial drive? And like what mm. motivates you now? Is it the same? Like, and like when I ask this as well, like sort of in your own words, 
Yeah. Like, if you had, if you're telling someone, like, what motivates you? What motivated you going to the gym? Is it the same now? And like, what motivates you now? No, it's completely different now. Um, when I first got into the gym, what motivated me was I wasn't happy with the way I looked or happy by the way I was treated from people. So whether it be the bullying from school mixed with um, people's opinion, whether it be family, friends, they're putting their opinion on. Um, and then just not being happy with myself the way I look. Um, obviously, no one likes to look fat and ugly. Nobody does. But that's just something that, for me, it was my final flip switch. Some people need to have a heart attack before they flip that switch. Um, for me, it was just looked in the mirror and just went, okay, this needs to change. Um, and then what motivates me to come now is my goals, ambitions, and dreams are just huge. Um, there is no room for real error or wasting time. Every session, everything has a meaning behind it. Um, I'm motivated by wanting to win IPF World Championships um, World's Strongest Man, breaking world records, national records, solidifying my place in time as the greatest of all time in powerlifting and strength sports in general. So what competitions are you training for at the moment? Well, I've got a couple of competitions coming up. I know next week, well actually this week, uh, the 5th of August, I have a comp coming up to qualify for state championships. It's nothing too difficult or too crazy. It's just to put a number on the board to pass. I'm not going to promote the hell out of this one simply because, well, that's not my true comeback, if you will. Um, it's just me getting on the platform, doing my job so I can go to states at the end of the year, which is in December. I believe the date's December 12th or 14th, something like that, for the juniors. Um, and that's where I'm really going to pop off, kick the door down, and just go for it. Like, that's where we're going to send in, come back from this injury, so. So, what happens is, like, and say, like, pretend I'm, like, I haven't asked you a question. Yeah. So, I'll get you to start off. Um, what happened, like, with your knee now? Like, tell me the whole story, mm. like, how it affected everything, like, how you felt at the time when it happened, and what it what it's been like coming back from that kind of injury. Mm. So I had a knee injury, shit, about a year and a bit ago. Um, actually over a year, um, I think, yeah, year and a bit, we'll say that. Um, I tore my ACL, um, which is in my left leg. Um, what happened was I was in the car, um, had a family member driving, we're in the passenger side, a P plate has realised they're in the wrong lane, force is over, truck in front of us slams, we slam, our brake pads snap and we go just flying forward. Um, lucky enough, no one died, but um, I guess just the positioning, the jolt just snapped the knee. I don't know if maybe I had like a previous injury there that I was unaware of and it was just kind of the final nail in the coffin. Um, but once it happened, I knew something was wrong because most people outside, you can't hear it, but when you hear something internally, you just know. Um, if you haven't had an injury before, you can't really understand what I'm talking about, but if you have, you know. And um, thought it was gonna be fine, waited a couple of days, about a week, I was like, yeah, she'll be right. Um, saw the doctor, he's like, look, let's just send you in for an MRI scan. At this time, the MRI scan was booked a further two weeks. I was still in prep for nationals, so I was still squatting um, 220 for reps, um, deadlifting 260, 270, benching, thinking everything was normal. I had a bit of knee pain, but I thought it was, you know, just a strain, nothing too difficult. Had that happen, went to the MRI and came back as a completely torn ACL, um, complete tear. Everything else in the knee was perfectly intact though, so I got lucky. Um, then I had to wait a full year for surgery. So that was probably the hardest time where I got that opportunity for nationals, I was like, sweet, let's go. A couple of weeks out, missed it, and then I was invited, um, got an email about IPF Worlds. I was like, fuck, can't really put my name in the hat for that one. Um, so that was a bit disheartening, because I definitely felt like, even if I didn't win, I felt like I could have put up a decent number and kind of solidified myself that I'm coming up, that I'm one of the dogs to look out for. Wasn't meant to be, so, during that next year, it was very much a back and forth battle with myself mentally. 
um, and emotionally, spiritually, physically in every way. Um, the pain every day it caused issues both with friends, family and just work life because um, I was just grouchy. The pain was just aggravating as shit. Um, skip along, we're about, I think, several months before my surgery. I was like, well, I didn't know I was having surgery at that point. I was like, fuck it, I'm going for the, I'm just gonna do a comp. I'm just gonna go for it and just send it one last go. I was in prep, I squatted two, I think 245 on the safety bar. And I was like, cool, we're, we're looking good. Deadlifted 270, benched 150, everything's going fine. We're, we're happy, in pain, but we're making it work. We're managing it. Then I get a call after the 270 deadlift. Hey, you're going in for surgery in three days. You know, get ready for surgery. Here's the details. Message my coach at the time, um, Dark Side of Strength. He pretty much said, gun it, go for it, whatever. Loaded up, went 300, 48 hours after I pulled 270, pulled the 300, next day went in for surgery. Um, so it was a cool moment to be a part of that 300 kilo club, but it was also disheartening to where one day I go from pulling 300 kilos, then going to have to learn how to walk properly again in 24 hours after it. Um, and coming back from that was using crutches to walk. The rehab was painful. The knee was in pain, it was swollen. It looked like I had a watermelon for a joint. Um, but overall it was a successful surgery. Went home the following day. Um, that was March 30th. Um, yep, March 30th. Had about two, three, four weeks of just rehabbing. Started squatting, I think, by week three or four um, with my physio, Spandex Physio Mason. He's phenomenal. Um, worked with him, still work with him, and he's now got me back to squatting 205 kilos, um, which will be way more than that. Um, by December, simply because it moved so fast and it was more of a test week for the knee. Um, deadlifting 235, comfortably, happy. Bench, still the same, we're pushing that more now. Haven't really tested that yet. Um, but it's been a lot of mental, mental fights with myself to get going, get it rolling. Um, but we're here now, I'm gonna, we've got 20 weeks to kick ass and put up a, a big total at, in December and Show them that we're back. Describe, um, like, what's your training like at the moment? And, like, what, like, yeah, so for the comp you're going towards, like, mm -hmm. what kind of training, like, what's the lead up to that like? So with the comp coming up, training is looking like about a, it's very difficult. We're on a four-day split at the moment, which means we're doing a majority of a heavier squat on the Monday with some accessory work and some bench work. Tuesday is more of a bench and accessory day to follow up. Wednesday we have off. Thursday or Friday we do our heavy deadlifts depending on work. Um, we're probably just gonna end up pushing that to a Friday and just doing Thursday another accessory day. And then Saturday is either a catch up day if we have to or just another two rest days. Um, we're looking to put up some big numbers through. Um, the goal and the plan, um, I can't even say goal, the plan is to put up a 275 kilo squat a 300 plus kilogram deadlift and a 160. If we're feeling like a prime, a prime powerlifter, 170 kilogram deadlift, which would be nice. Um, as Dench is my weakest lift, I don't have the greatest leverages. I'm a deadlift specialist, so obviously my leverages are better there. Um, the squat, the 275, that's just a nice number seeing all the reds on there instead of a bunch of change. And then the bench is just like every, every year on, I put 20 kilos on it and eventually it'd be good enough to compete with the big boys. But I know the deadlift, that's my specialty. I'll come out of the woodworks and I'll pull something crazy for the win. I do believe we've got some big heavy hitters at States. I know we have Ben, <laughs> um, I look up to him in a way. He's definitely like the number one guy I look at as, I'd say he's probably the best heavyweight right now in Australia um, for IPF APU. And he's definitely a guy I'm gunning for and bringing the fight to him. And I hope he's ready. I hope he's training hard. <laughs> is, it, is it scary, like, getting under, like, lifting heavier weights? Like, when you're testing out your PRs and stuff? Oh, it's <laughs> shit scary. Yeah, of course it is. Um, it's definitely scary because it's... But I also guess it's scary when you look on the outside a couple of days leading into it. 
But that's where it becomes a mental challenge of, do you have the mentality to turn that fear into almost confidence? You want the utmost confidence when you're going into it. If you're afraid and you're, and that fear makes you timid, you're probably gonna miss the lift. You're not gonna hit it. But if you go in there and use that fear as fuel and be like, no, I've done, I've done the work, I've put in the effort, I know I'm on point, I know I'm ready, I've had done my sleep, I've done my research, then that should give you confidence where you're like, I'm gonna fucking smoke it. Um, but you don't want to be overconfident to where you're getting under the bar and you're just not being smart, you're not being attentive, you're not keeping everything tight, controlled and ready. Um, so I guess it's a bit of happy medium, but it is definitely doing something you've never done before is you, there's fear there, there's doubt there. If you're, if you're saying there's, you have no doubt in yourself when you're doing something you've never done before, you're full of shit. And I'll call you out on it, I don't care. Um, you can't, it's, it's like if, you're the first person to ever do something. Of course there's doubt, there's always doubt. Um, there's fear, but there's also excitement in doing something you've never done before. I can promise you that for me, doing something I've never done before, the fear is 110%, but the excitement to do and complete it is 120. So it, it levels out really, but I guess that's just my mentality. Everyone will be different, but yeah, there's fear, there's doubt. Um, especially if you surround yourself with the wrong people. If you're around people and they go, oh, you know, you're not gonna hit that, you're not gonna, you're just gonna make mistakes or you're not ready for it or, you know, they aren't supportive in a way that, that makes you better. Like, obviously you want them to be honest with you and you want them to give you constructive criticism, but you also don't want them blowing smoke up your ass or pulling you down. You want that happy medium to where they're gonna make you a better person, a better lifter, but also not making life harder for yourself. I guess when you think of a question or something about powerlifting, it all correlates to each other. Like for example, what's important, diet training or like what, which one's more important? They're just as important as each other, is mentality, you know, the people you surround yourself, they both correlate. Like that's why there's a saying, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Because the people you surround yourself with is the future you will have. You can't go out drinking every single night with your friends and say you're not an alcoholic. <laughs> Like, <laughs> it's just one of those things. And I can promise you, if you got into a training in powerlifting and you had everybody else stronger than you, I can guarantee you're going to get strong enough to beat them. Um, there's, I think it was the best person who said it, um, Louis from Westside. Um, Westside versus the world. I believe he said it in that documentary. Um, it was, uh, if you run with a lamb, you're going to develop a limp. Uh, meaning train with people better than you, train with people stronger than you, train with people who push you to be better, who force you to get better. Everything correlates with one another. So um, my name's Michael, Michael J. Um, I'm 21 years old, live in New South Wales, Australia. Um, my goal and my dream is to be the world's strongest man and IPF world champion. Um, bit about myself, I was, Several years ago, about between the ages of 15 to early 17, I was a very obese, <laughs> obese child, um, weighing 170 kilos. Um, came with a lot of struggles back then in terms of just walking around doing things, being out of breath, having like being out of breath, just tying my shoes, not going out places. I refused to take photos. I refused to go out. Um, didn't have a life. Um, was bullied for that during school, um, picked on, got into fights. The, the lot of it, it wasn't a great time for me uh, mentally. I was very depressed, so my escape was food and gaming. Um, it was a completely different lifestyle to then now. Um, now it's a case of I train four to five times a week, um, whether it be weight training, powerlifting style, or cardio uh, for my rehab of the knee. Um, and also dieting change as we're before I would eat like shit as you would when you gain 170 kilos as we're now it's more vegetables proper carbs good carbs good proteins keeping everything on track having a nutritionist keep me in keep me on top of my game um, training as hard as and intense as I can um, less times on the games less times on the shitty foods and more time on just bettering myself overall as a person. Um, there's been a lot of struggles to get to the point where I am now, it wasn't overnight. 
I mean, it's been several years from 17 to 21. A lot of years, a lot of adversity, injuries, um, weight gain, weight loss, the struggles of that. Um, if you've gone through it, you know it. If you don't, then it's a pain in the ass because <laughs> um, you're, you're worried about a number on the scale. You're worried about how you look, T-shirts fit in a certain way, jackets fit in, pants fit in, not having a big fat stomach out, um, looking a certain way, having people look at you with disgust. Um, so it, it's definitely a big change to now. Um, my confidence is an all-time high. I can wear anything. Shit, I could probably wear a Speedo and run down the street. <laughs> but it's just one of those different things. Um, but my goal now and who I am now, different. Um, I will be the greatest of all time. That said. <laughs>